Hollywood is packed full of talented prop makers and set designers, but we can forgive them if sometimes they get a little bit lazy. Some of your favourite horror movies have provided random props for a whole range of films you would never even guess. So without further ado, I'm Amy from What Culture, and here are 10 horror movie props you didn't know were reused. 10. Little Shop of Horror's dentist tools were used in Batman. What do Bill Murray's Arthur Denton and Jack Nicholson's The Joker have in common? Well, they were both operated on using the exact same tools. For Nicholson's Jack Napier in Batman, his transformation to become the clown prince of crime sees his face fixed up by a shoddy doctor. You wouldn't know it, but the instruments used to reconstruct the Joker's face after his initial run-in with the Dark Knight had been recycled from 1986's Little Shop of Horrors. In Frank Oz's famed take on Little Shop of Horrors, we see Bill Murray's character paying a visit to the sinister dentist Orin Scrivello. During Arthur's time in the dentist's chair, several of the tools used are also present and accounted for by the time Tim Burton's first Batman picture rolled around three years later. There's surely some sort of comparison to be made here between a dentist and the Joker for those with a fear of getting their pearly whites checked out from time to time, although the main connection here is simply a smart case of reinvention that neatly ties Little Shop of Horrors to Batman. 9. Ghostbusters PKE meter was used in They Live Egan Spengler is the crazed genius of the Ghostbusters team, and it's not necessarily surprising to see that some of his ingenious inventions have been put to use in other places across Hollywood. Designed by Spengler in order to track things that go bump in the night, the psychokinetic energy meter can be spotted in John Carpenter's iconic They Live. In the Horror Masters 1988 picture, the PKE meter is used by the military as a way to detect alien life forms. Of course, They Live was headed up by Rowdy Roddy Piper, and the PKE meter would would appear in yet another wrestler-driven movie later on in the timeline. Spengler's swanky psychokinetic energy device was not only good enough for the military and they live to use, but it was also featured in 1991's Hulk Hogan-fronted Suburban Commando, a movie that also had an appearance from The Undertaker, and in that movie the device was used to track down a freeze laser. Hunting ghosts, pinpointing aliens, tracking down freeze lasers, the PKE has turned out to be quite a versatile piece of kit. Eight. Starship Troopers' armor was used in Planet of the Apes. Starship Troopers may have received generally negative reviews at its first release, but over the years it's become another one of those beloved cult favorites. The film famously saw a future where the mobile infantry military unit were used in an intergalactic war with the insectoid arachnids. And in a fun piece of trivia, the helmets used by Casper Van Dien and his cohort would be given a lick of paint and some modifications to be used four years later in Tim Burton's Planet of the Apes. Apes. Whilst it's not immediately obvious that the headgear is the same in Starship Troopers and Planet of the Apes, that's not the case in Firefly. Josh Whedon's beloved one-season TV series is another project that used the Starship Troopers gear. Here though, it's a lot clearer to see that the Alliance has borrowed their uniforms from that 1997 movie. As Whedon has explained in the years since, a lack of budget saw the Starship Troopers uniform rented out rather than having the show splash out on creating new designs. On the flip side of this, Starship Troopers was also the film that used several sets from 1990's Total Recall, so nobody's quite innocent here. 7. Frankenstein's Science Lab was used in Young Frankenstein when parodying an existing piece of media, there is something to be said for going the extra mile when it comes to set dressings, props, and details. For Mel Brooks's Young Frankenstein, one could be forgiven for thinking that the lab equipment seen in the picture was simply your run-of-the-mill, generic science lab stuff. In reality, though, Brooks really went the extra mile on this one and tracked down a lot of the kit that was used in the 1931 original Frankenstein. Those pieces were created for the most beloved adaptation of Mary Shelley's 1818 novel, and Brooks was wanted to use as much as he could from the film that first brought Dr. Frankenstein and his creation to silver screen life. To add a further sense of authenticity to young Frankenstein, Mel Brooks also famously shot the movie solely in black and white. He used a credit sequence and transitional shots reminiscent of the horrors from the 1930s, and had composer John Morris create a score that likewise felt from that same period. You've got to give it to the man, he was cutting no corners. 6. Chucky's eyes were used on Tales from the Crypt Believe it or not, the eyes of the infamous Crypt Keeper from HBO's Tales from the Crypt series are one and the same as the set of eyes used to bring Chucky to life for the first Child's Play movie. 
And the reason behind this fantastic bit of horror trivia is the one and only Kevin Yeager. Yeager was the person tasked with designing Chucky when Child's Play went into production. But away from the world of good guy dolls, Yeager was also a pivotal part of the Tales from the Crypt. With the Chucky doll having been stripped down and deconstructed following 1988's Child's Play, Yeager reused the doll's eyes when he began working on Tales from the Crypt, meaning that the Crypt Keeper literally has Chucky's eyes stuck in his head. If having Chucky and the Crypt Keeper on his CV wasn't enough, Yeager has also had the chance to dabble in several famous horror franchises, including Friday the 13th The Final Chapter, Hellraiser Bloodlines, and a trio of A Nightmare on Elm Street movies. 5. The Texas Chainsaw Massacre's remake newspaper was used in No Country for Old Men. The 2003 remake of The Texas Chainsaw Massacre and 2007's No Country for Old Men both share one of the busiest, most famous props in Hollywood. One of the many victims in The Texas Chainsaw Massacre redo was seen covered in newspaper, and that exact same print layout can be seen on the newspaper being read by Tommy Lee Jones' Ed Tom Bell in No Country for Old Men. Given how trivial the use of a newspaper usually is in a movie or TV show. This is a minute detail that tends to pass us by. But not only does this page set up feature in the Texas Chainsaw Massacre and No Country for Old Men, it's been featured in a whole slew of other projects. The same newspaper layout and content appears in Back to the Future, 10 Things I Hate About You, Casper, Married with Children, Scrubs, and many, many more. Of course, it's not actually the same physical piece of paper that's being reused, but the same art and same layout has been seen in all of these projects. 4. Psycho's Ford Custom 300 was used in Halloween H20 Now, the current canon of the franchise may have wiped Halloween H20 out of existence, but that doesn't mean it can't still live on in our hearts and memories. One of the cool details about the film is that Jamie Lee Curtis's mum, Janet Lee, actually appears in it as her secretary. Of all the roles dotted across her legendary career, Janet Lee is most famous for playing the doomed Marion Crane in Alfred Hitchcock's Psycho, a role for which Lee won a Golden Globe Award and was nominated for an Oscar. In a nice nod to Marion and Psycho, when Halloween H20 features Lee's Norma at her car, it's the same car that her Psycho character bought with stolen money and drove to the Bates Motel in. That car is a 1957 Ford Custom 300, and the production team even went as far as to make sure that the car had the same plates as the ones in Psycho. 3. Predator's minigun was used in Terminator 2. Back in 91, Terminator 2 Judgment Day came to the silver screen, bringing with it some legendary special effects work and taking one of the first film's fundamentals and flipping it on its head. This time, Arnold Schwarzenegger's T-800 unit is one of the good guys, sent back from the future to protect Sarah Connor and her son John from the sinister liquid metal form of Robert Patrick's T-1000. At one point in T-2, we see the T-800 use a minigun. That minigun is the exact same gun gun prop that was seen throughout 1987's Predator. Of course, Predator also starred Schwarzenegger, although he didn't get to wield the weapon in it. What Arnold did get to play with in Predator Mind was the same grenade launcher prop used by Al Pacino's Tony Montana in Scarface. 2. A Nightmare on Elm Street's Freddy Glove was used in Evil Dead 2. Wes Craven and Sam Raimi famously had a faux rivalry that ran for years. After seeing how Craven had featured a torn Jaws poster in The Hills Have Eyes as a way to proclaim that Hills was a real horror movie, Raimi followed suit and featured a torn poster of that 1977 Craven picture in The Evil Dead. By the time A Nightmare on Elm Street rolled around, Wes went one better and had the protagonist Nancy actually fall asleep whilst watching The Evil Dead. To prove the movie was so tame you could just nod off. So when Raimi got to work on Evil Dead 2, he decided to wink at Craven again, and to do this, he showed a razor-fingered glove on the wall of the cellar in the cabin where so much of that sequel takes place. The belief in the industry is that that genuinely is the prop from the Nightmare franchise that was just borrowed by some crew and handed over for a bit. 1. Gwyneth Paltrow's severed seven head was used in Contagion one of the greatest scenes that we all think we saw but never did is the sight of Gwyneth Paltrow's severed head in the box at the end of Seven. At that film's close, John Doe torments Detective Mills, insinuating that the head of Mills' wife, Tracy, is in the box that gets delivered to the scene. Doe proclaims how she begged for her life and the life of her unborn child that Mills had yet to be told about. Whilst Detective Lieutenant Somerset does get a peek at what's in the box, no matter what you think, we as the audience never saw it, I promise you. 
or at least we didn't see it in that movie. Fincher's 1995 movie did originally plan to show Tracy's severed head in the box, and so a model of Paltrow's decapitated head was actually made. And whilst the model didn't make it into Seven, it was used in 2011's Contagion. In that Steven Soderbergh effort, Paltrow's Beth is the first big name casualty of a mystery virus that's taking over the globe. When an autopsy is performed on Beth, the production finally got the opportunity to use that severed Paltrow head that had been made for Seven all those years ago. And with that, we've reached the end of this list of 10 horror movie props you didn't know were reused. If you know of any more, then please let us know in the comments down below, and remember to check out whatculture.com for more lists and articles like this every single day. I've been Amy from What Culture, and I'll catch you next time.